please rise, ladies and gentlemen. The President of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency President Fidel V. Ramos. Okay, please be seated, ladies and gentlemen. The 10 outstanding students of the Philippines, NAMPRIL, the Bishops Businessmen's Conference, the Spirit of EDSA Foundation, and the ASEAN Chamber of Commerce and Industry all have a common leader, a common mover. These organizations bear the imprint of his strong belief in the capability of the Filipino to achieve peace, progress, and nationhood. Ladies and gentlemen, the former Trade and Industry Secretary, Chairman of RFM Foundation and TOSP Executive Committee, Mr. Jose S. Concepcion, Jr. Mr. President, before you are Rizal's fair hope of the fatherland. They are all living examples of a commitment to excellence, intellectual, moral and spiritual. By their action, they have brought faith, hope, and love to their respective communities. They were chosen from a list of 138 nominees, representing 74 schools nationwide, from Baguio City in the north to Zamboanga City in the south. They were chosen because of their superior academic performance, responsible leadership, a deep sense of community awareness and involvement, and personal values anchored on a living faith in God. The distinguished board of judges had a distinct opportunity of a focused discussion with a cross-section of the Filipino youth regarding their dreams, their hopes, their convictions on many facets of life, the economy, morality, and values of people, and they were owed by their very strong social orientation, a treasure they possess at such a tender age. As we enter the third millennium unfolding before us, the pursuit of excellence of a humane global environment is the challenge before them. It is the responsibility of our generation that we pass on to the youth, a nation united, Muslims and Christians, reaching out to each other for peace, justice, and development, so that all Filipinos shall live in the dignity of a human person. The coming election in the arm on September 9 may seem to many a distant event, but the reality is that it will impact deeply on our lives and our future. First, it will define the prospects for peace and development in the arm. It will offer the people of this region, which is among the most embattled and depressed areas in the country, a viable means of change. And it will determine whether Mindanao will ever fulfill its role as the land of promise or become a potential time bomb in our nation's development. If the armed elections fail, then all our hard-earned gains in political stability and economic progress will be put to serious risk. Whether for good or bad, the repercussions of the forthcoming armed elections will be felt by every Filipino today and in the generations to come. This is the challenge before you and the youth whose ideals you embody, the building of communities, Muslims and Christians alike, that care and share so that we can build one nation, one people, in peace and justice. Thank you, uh, Mr. Concepcion.
You know, ladies and gentlemen, the very difficult task of selecting the 10 outstanding students of the Philippines from among the 30 top-notch finalists that uh, you've seen before you today was discharged by a board of judges chaired by the Honorable Commissioner Mona Valisno on behalf of the Chairman of the Commission on Higher Education, the Honorable Alcala, who is out of the country. So may I now call on Commissioner Valisno to present the members of the board of judges. Excellency, President Fidel V. Ramos, ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce and formally acknowledge the highly distinguished members of the Board of Judges for this year's search for the 10 outstanding students of the Philippines. They are among the leading visionaries of our time. Their sterling qualities and achievements in their respective fields of endeavor predestined their participation in the search for the new generation of Filipino leaders and trailblazers. Mr. President, the members of the Board of Judges, kindred spirits of the TOSP awardees are Honorable Angel C. Alcala, Chairman of the Commission on Higher Education, Honorable Raul S. Rocco, Chairman of the Senate Committee on Education, General Ramon J. Farolan, President of the Philippine Star, Mr. Guillermo D. Luchanco, Trustee of the RFM Foundation Incorporated and President of the Science Park of the Philippines, Mr. Chidoro M. Loxin, Jr., Publisher and Editor-in-Chief of Today, Ambassador Oscar Villadolid, Special Presidential Envoy to APEC CM2, and Mr. Eduardo De Guia, Overall Screening Committee Chairman and Executive Vice President of PICPA, as well as partner of SGV, former Chairman of the Board of Accountancy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Valisno. Well, Mr. President and ladies and gentlemen, we have come to that moment uh, when we will now announce the winners of the 10 Outstanding Students Award of the Philippines. Uh, before we do that, the President of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency Fidel V. Ramos, will present the awards to this year's 10 Outstanding Students of the Philippines, and he will be assisted by Mr. Jose Concepcion, Jr., CHED Commissioner, or CHED Commissioner, Mona Valiz Concepcion III, Mr. Alfredo Ramos, Mr. Virgilio Cervantes, and Mr. Eduardo de Guia, and may we please request uh, all of the presenters to make their way in front of the stage to receive the awardees. And while they are doing that, uh, I would like to read the text of the trophy that will be awarded to uh, each of the winners of the 10 Outstanding Students of the Philippines. The text of the trophy reads, This award of distinction is given to the name of the student in recognition of his exemplary leadership, superior academic performance, outstanding achievements, a deep sense of social responsibility and involvement, and personal values anchored on faith in God, that make him a true model and inspiration of the Filipino youth for dedicated service to God and country. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, we now present to you with great pride the 10 outstanding students of the Philippines, Batch 1996. The envelope, please. I think you have it. <laughs> uh, take it, take it. <laughs> Don't worry, wala si Baba Jiggy. I have it with me. And I hope I don't make a mistake. The first winner of the 10 Outstanding Students of the Philippines is Siti Jehanyu Mutin. <laughs> Class Salamanca. 
valedictorian, Bachelor of Laws, Mindanao State University. Second awardee, Mr. Lord James Aguilar. <laughs> Summa cum laude, Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy, Ateneo de Manila University. Fabian Castrodes, University Leadership Awardee, Bachelor of Arts in English, Mindanao State University. Angela Lester A. Montesa, Magna Cum Laude, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, Silima University. Mr. Eric C. Divina Gracia, Magna Cum Laude, Bachelor of Arts in Political Science, University of San Agustin. Sixth awardee, Mr. Jose Reynante Papel, cum laude, Bachelor of Arts in Economics, Santa College. Seventh awardee, Nailin P. Ona, Summa Cum Laude, Bachelor of Science in Biology, major in Genetics, University of the Philippines, Los Paños. Marilyn A. Lorente, <laughs> Summa Cum Laude, 
summa cum laude, Bachelor of Science in Secondary Education, St. Louis University. Jennifer Joan M. Theo. <laughs> Outstanding Jose Rizal Model Student of the Philippines, Bachelor of Arts in English, University of San Carlos. Finally, Arlan V. Payat, recipient presidential award for outstanding achievement, Bachelor of Science in Secondary Education, Holy Angel University. opportunity for the awardees to have a photograph with the president. Once again, our uh, 10 outstanding students of the Philippines, Seti Jahan Yu Mutin from the Mindanao State University, Mr. Lor James Aguilar from the Ateneo de Manila University, Mr. Mark Fabian Castrodes from Mindanao State University, Ms. Angela Lester Montesa from Siliman University, Mr. Eric Divinagracia from the University of San Agustin, Mr. Jose Reynante Papel from San Beda College, Ms. Naylin P. Ona from the University of the Philippines in Los Baños, Ms. Marilyn A. Lorente from St. Louis University, Ms. Jennifer Joan Tio from the University of San Carlos, and Mr. Arlan Payad from the Holy Angel University. Another round of applause for the awardees of the 1996 Ten Outstanding Students of the Philippines. Thank you very much, the awardees. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, 30 finalists prepared a collective statement for this occasion. A statement that expresses their commitment to service and their hope for the future. We would now like to call on Mr. Lord James Aguilar to read that statement on behalf of all the finalists. His Excellency President Fidel V. Ramos, ladies and gentlemen, Isang taos pusong pagbati sa inyong lahat. Foremost in our hearts is gratitude to RFM Foundation, which continuously devotes itself in developing our nation's youth, to the Commission on Higher Education, to the Rotary Club of Makati Central, and to National Bookstore. We extend our heartfelt appreciation to our parents who have loved 
cared and nurtured us to be the persons that we are today. To all our mentors and school heads, we thank you for your patience and support. But above all, we want to bring back all the glory and honor to the one who gave us our lives, our abilities, and the opportunities to be outstanding students, our God Almighty. This year's search for the 10 outstanding students of the Philippines bears paramount significance as we commemorate the centennial of the Philippine Revolution and the 10th anniversary of the people power in ETSA. After centuries of relentless struggles against various economic, political, and sociocultural concerns, the revolution takes new form. We continue to embody what Dr. Jose Rizal wanted us to be, the future of the fatherland. Today, we are fortunate to witness and be part of a fast developing nation. After centuries of colonial rule and dark years of martial law, we now enjoy the fruits of an enlightened democracy. This would not have been a reality without the selfless sacrifices made by those who came before us. However, even if we carry within us the fiery strength and undying valor of our ancestors who valiantly offered their lives for our freedom, we still believe that we cannot readily overcome the crippling social ills plaguing our country. Concerted efforts driven by a burning nationalism is imperative. Indeed, the revolution continues. We continue to wage war against poverty. Though the nation's economy is on the uptrend, we can't help but notice that its gains are not savored by the majority of the Filipinos. While the ordinary Juan de la Cruz wallows in abject poverty, the wealth of the country remains in the hands of the few. We continue to wage war against threats to peace, although immense efforts have been dedicated to improving our peace and order situation, the crime incidents continue to rise. The creation of SPCPD is commendable. However, it demands prudence, sensitivity, and open-mindedness from all sectors in order to attain genuine and lasting peace and solidarity that nevertheless faces squarely religious and cultural differences. We continue to wage war against injustice in all levels, personal, institutional, and social. We live under a judicial system which envies other nations that exempt no one from the demands of justice. We continue to wage war against ignorance. Quality education continues to be a privilege rather than a right. The prohibitive cost of education, the lack of competent and justly compensated teachers and the unadapting curriculum impede human growth and development. We continue to wage war against the destruction of our environment. Although efforts have been initiated to preserve our natural resources, these are not enough to save our entire ecosystem. We call for more vigilance in enforcing environmental laws. Above all, we believe that the root of these problems is seeping moral decadence. We fail to discern what's right from wrong. Self-gain has been the motivation for our actions. Responsibility and concern for others have taken the back seat in terms of priorities. Knowing the issues is not enough though. Translating our ideals into action is crucial to bring about this new revolution. As in any revolution, this is a pact, a contract, a covenant. You expect us to be the future of this nation, but the future we will build will only be as strong as the foundation which you, our present leaders, leave us to build upon. Therefore, we expect you to fulfill your duties with utmost competence and personal integrity. We, on our part, pledge a unified effort to initiate, empower, and catalyze the nation for the needed reforms responding to diverse social evils. It is in this light, Mr. President, 
that we extend our hands in partnership to the building of a better Philippines by the year 2000 and beyond. We also pledge a leadership which not only knows how to get things done, but knows how to make the right things work for the right reasons and for the right persons. If we sound like prophets, it is because in a real sense, we are. Our passion and conviction spring from ideals and visions we are deeply in touch with, ideals and visions which you also share and strive to enflesh. We may need to remind you of such higher things once in a while, but we do not mind, for such is our role. Tunay na isang hamon ang bagong revolusyon na nangangailangan ng pagtugon mula sa amin, mga kabataan. At ito ay buong loob naming tinatanggap. Maraming salamat po. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. and in the not too distant future father, Lord James Aguilar. And at this point, uh, to introduce our guest of honor and the speaker, ladies and gentlemen, Commissioner Mona Balisto. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency, President Fidel Valdez Ramos. Maraming salamat, Dr. Mona Balisno, Commissioner of Higher Education, I also greet all the other commissioners of higher education who are here with us. Ang ating uh, masipag na taga-pakilos ng TOSP, no other than uh, Jose Concepcion Jr., otherwise known as Jokon, who is uh, also known as uh, Mr. Amfrel, and so uh, going to be known as Mr. ARMM. <laughs> The uh, distinguished uh, professors and uh, patrons, as well as the uh, uh, leaders of the uh, Board of Judges and the Screening Committee, who are here with us at the presidential table, uh, Eddie Guia, uh, Fred Ramos, uh, Joey Concepcion, and uh, Virgil Cervantes, who have... Uh, really distinguish themselves outstandingly, exceedingly, and admirably. For uh, showing us the very fruitful harvest of their year's work by this distinguished group of 30 outstanding students of the Philippines, whom I consider all gold winners, just like Onyok Pilasco. <laughs> for uh, succeeding in reaching the very top of the finals in this yearly prestigious and uh, most popular contest among our young people. Aside from congratulating the awardees and the winners, let me also congratulate their parents, their teachers, their admirers, supporters, brothers, sisters, and uh, loved ones who have all labored together and sacrificed even to bring these young people here with us. Their honor is yours as well as mine. Let me also thank once more the uh, Commission on Higher Education led by uh, Chairman Dr. Angel Alcala, the Rotary Club of Makati Central, the National Bookstore, the RFM Group of Companies, and most especially the RFM Foundation under the leadership of uh, Joe Kohn. All of these good people have contributed their vision, their energy, their talent, their resources to making this moment possible and they to deserve our highest 
commendations. Once more with feeling. <laughs> These TOSP awards are unique in that they recognize people so talented, so accomplished, and yet so young. And it is no exaggeration to say that what we are seeing in the faces of these young Filipinos, men and women, is nothing less than the future of Filipino leadership. That is not an idle statement uh, made by your president because of the importance of this occasion. But if you look back, uh, indeed, previous TOSPs have already reached the highest levels of national leadership. Uh, but let us concentrate on these 10 winners. Unang una, isang Muslim na dalaga, Bachelor of Laws, Mindanao State University. Parakparuli natin si Siti. And then, uh, second, not necessarily in rank, but second in their being mentioned, si Lord James Aguilar, Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy, na alagay ko because of the uniform that he carries <laughs> is already committed to a certain career pagmasdan natin yung kombinasyon na yan Muslim, Christian what a message for our peace process in the southern Philippines <laughs> and then pumapangatlo Ito si Mark Pabian, Mindanao State University. Pero Kristiyano ito. Ikaw ba'y kinalaban, sinaktan, binaril, inambos, nung nandung ka sa Marawi? Of course not. And he also has been awarded because of university leadership. Yan ang paring, parang ano, parang facilitator sa peace process, nasa gitna. Hindi ho ba? Uh, at saka, ngayon, yung mga sumusunod, galing lahat sa gitnang Pilipinas, from Central Philippines, from Visayas, Angela, Siliman University. Tina Dumaguete. Si Eric, University of San Agustin. Iloilo. And that happens to be my favorite province because it's the province of the First Lady. <laughs> Pangatlo pa sa Visayas, sunod-sunod dito. Jennifer, University of San Carlos, sa Sibuyan. And then, uh, sinundan ni Arlan, Holy Angel University. Saan ba ito? Doon, sa gitna ng may bike. <laughs> But uh, in spite of what is being said in the newspapers, that the Megadai is uh, a fiasco, it has collapsed, it has uh, been a failure, what people and some parts of media are not seeing is that those that have been benefited by all of these dikes and other related engineering structures, like the people of Angeles City, yeah, Holy Angel University, and uh, San Fernando, and all those that already are not talking because they have been saved. The people in Clark Air Base, our number one sunrise investment destination. Yung mga nandun sa Tarlac side. Eh, yan ang nakikinabang din sa mga mega dike, super dike, dike. Pero hindi FBR dikes po ang pangalan ng mga yan. Somebody just labeled it like that because they were expecting it to fail and relate your president with the failure. Anyway, tutukan natin ito mga ten. Si Jose Reynante, ah, sa Beta College. Finally, nakapasok ang Metro Manila. The only one out of the top ten. Pero ano bang kahulugan nitong San Beda College na ito? Aba, kapitbahay ng mga taga-Malacanang yan. <laughs> Nakapuntos din kami. Besides, on that side of the street, San Beda and Arlegi are in the same barangay. Kabarangay ko yan. Kapit ka San Beda. 
Ito pa, nailinona, los banyos. Los banyos always manages to come in. Why? Because it's the center of our research, center of our international agricultural research and forestry research and fisheries research and uh, uh, local government research. All kinds of researches are taking place there. Kaya, kakabit na rin ako dyan. Bakit? In Los Banos, because we are uh, now chair of the APEC 1996, we have put up an APEC center for uh, technology exchange and training for small and medium enterprises. At uh, next week, bubuksan na namin yung center na yan, formally, although we have already uh, run some pilot courses there. At nandito yung kanilang masipag na chancellor. Yung maliit na tao na yun. <laughs> chancellor Aspirat, who uh, is my action man for this center. Now, what does this really mean? APEC, 18 member economies. Developing, develop, and one country stick behind even the developing. But because that is our national center for science, technology, and research, we have also the opportunity to open this up to all other countries outside of APEC. And there will be trainers and trainees. It is not necessarily the more advanced economies that will train us. No. Because uh, in the case of some of our Japanese friends, dahil sa sila ay naniniwala sa magical qualities ng nata de coco, they even ascribe aphrodisiac qualities to nata de coco. <laughs> eh gusto nilang malaman kung paano ba ginagawa yung nata de coco na yan. They want to know how. So I asked one of them, why are you going to make some yourselves there in Japan? No, they said, you want to know how it's done so that we can expand your production, because there is such a big market out there. Uh, sabi ko naman, okay lang yan. You come and uh, learn from uh, uh, DUP people in Los Banos. And we will also teach you, besides Nata Di Coco, Saluyot technology. <laughs> Meron ding uh, magical qualities yan. Or the wet process of uh, converting uh, coconut meat to uh, very clean coconut oil. And so this... Uh, uh, enlarged his curiosity. I said, why? What's that coconut oil? I said, that is how we make the most enhancing kind of uh, cosmetic products. The soap that comes from this, now being sold in the market internationally, beautifies the skin of our ladies, regardless of age. <laughs> and there is even a cocoa papaya soap that comes out of this process which is also good for the boys eh, humaba po yung aming usapan dahil dyan sa Los Banos na yan <laughs> eto pa, si Marilyn ng St. Louis University uh, this is not in St. Louis, Missouri you know? this is there in Baguio ano ba ito si Marilyn? abe, galing Cordillera ito iyan ang mga katutubong Pilipino mga Ang tawag ninyo, kumisan, ay lumads. Pero yung mga indigenous people, ayaw nilang patawag na lumads. Because they say, we are not lu and we are not mad. You know? <laughs> Bigyan natin ng uh, sariling parangal ang ating original Filipinos. Sila ang mga katutubo. Ayan, nandun niya sila. Pero din akong connection dyan. And so ako eh, part lumad din. No? And so, uh, I uh, hasten to depart a little from the prepared script to show to you the connections of all of this. And I will dwell with this a little later on again. But indeed, because of this choice and because of the backup of 20 more like them, we can be sure that the leadership of the country, not too long from now, will be in good hands. And so let us remember their faces well. Can you all uh, stand up, top 30? Yeah. And uh, will you kindly turn around 360 degrees?
so that everybody can see you. Yeah. We will be seeing them again, for these faces represent the best of their respective pro uh, professions, providing leadership to Philippine society, government, science, agriculture, industry, and a whole spectrum of sectors. And they will be the ones to launch a new era of growth and progress for all of us. I believe that the specialties that they represent Medicine, science, law, mathematics, agriculture, technology, teacher education, business, and the social sciences, to name a few, are among the most essential areas in which we need to develop competence, excellence, and leadership if we are to succeed in this fast-changing, competitive, global environment in which we all find ourselves today at the threshold of the 21st century. Indeed, these are the skills necessary to build a bridge between today and the 21st century. The bridge over which the rest of the Filipino people will go across. You will be the scientists who will help us keep abreast of the advances in science and technology. You will be the doctors, lawyers, and teachers who will keep the bodies and the minds of our people healthy and fit. And their perspectives sharp and expanded. You will be the entrepreneurs, managers, and chief executive officers who will take over National Bookstore, <laughs> Concepcion Group of Industries, Ayala, all those other big corporations are also yours for the taking in the future in your own time. And so we foresee that uh, with this crop, as well as the previous crops that uh, have gone before them, and Dong Puno is one of them. Dong, where are you? <laughs> Will you turn around 360 degrees also? <laughs> and Senator Raul Rocco, who was mentioned. Yeah, the mga predecessors ng mga ito. And so, I hope that all of you we look upon your award in uh, a higher sense. This award should be less as a crowning achievement, but more as a special calling to serve. In this place, which we call our hero soul, and there are about 45 of them there, uh, their pictures are quite small, but uh, you pause a while before you leave here as all and look at this mga bayani ng lahi natin. The pictures may be small, but I made the frame a little bigger. <laughs> That's why there are two frames there encompassing each picture. And uh, you will see that you are in good company. Another quality of these heroes is they were mostly young. Because how old was Rizal when he wrote uh, No Limit Tangre? Barely 27. And uh, El Filibusterismo came out two years later. Aguinaldo was the victorious hero of the revolution at age 27. And president at 29. Bonifacio also was at about 27 when he organized the Katipunan. And... Uh, stage the series of Christ and the first armed uprisings a hundred years ago. And I'll tell you more about him later on. Emilio Asinto, his right hand man, was four months short of 21. And at, he became a general of the revolution in addition to being the strategist and the writer for Bonifacio. Mabini was also a young man in his uh, early 30s. And the Del Pilars and the Lunas, likewise, were in that age category. What a wonderful harvest of young heroes a hundred years ago. My dear friends, I have always said that it is not necessary to die anymore for the Philippines, but for us, just live for it. By doing our normal day-to-day -day jobs in the best way we can, 
and in this process to spread the benefit of our intellect, our labors, our talents to others who are not as fortunate as we are. You know, the billions of the minds of the people is in itself achievement enough, but even more outstanding and even more heroic is the achievement of those who may not be here, who have employed their talents in their people's service. Many of them were unsung, surely unrecognized, may not have been so exemplary in school. In fact, some of them may not have gone to school in the way you have. Because some have had the opportunity only to have the uh, beginnings of basic education. But their sense of public service and of patriotism has been of far greater worth to our people than their biodata might suggest. But having said that, I must remind all of us that some of our sharpest intellects did contribute to the ruin of the Philippines during the years of the dictatorship. <laughs> but I'm impressing on you, my dear friends, the outstanding students, the outstanding young Filipinos, is the need for our commitment to values, which is the patriotic compass by which the best minds can be pointed in the right direction. We can take your intelligence, your presence here today, as granted, given, accepted. But I do want to ask you, the young outstanding people of the Philippines, as your president, to pledge yourselves to the service of our people, especially those who may not have been endowed with the same resources, opportunities, and native qualities as you have enjoyed. Remember that from those to whom much has been given, much is expected, much is required. We have reached today a crucial stage in our quest for a just peace. And as Jokon reminded us just a while ago, that this involves our southern regions. Peace with justice, because of our peace process in Mindanao, will lead to its sustainable development especially for those people that have suffered for far too long from the ravages of poverty and violence. We have high hopes that the zone of peace and development are so bad for sure. And I would like to report to you, based on my latest conversation with uh, Chairman Yan of our Peace Panel and Ruben Torres, our Executive Secretary, who are right now riding in a car from the office of uh, President Suharto after they made their call to present the newly initial peace agreement between the government of the Philippines and the Moro National Liberation Front. On their way back to their workshop, they were in a car. And I was talking to them from here. And their voices were just as loud as if they were there in the San Pedro College campus. And I highlight this because that is the nature of our world today. High-tech. Biro nyo ito si Ruben Torres, nakasakay sa kotse sa Jakarta, going from the Malacanang there to uh, the Regent Hotel. Tumata, uh, sumasagot sa akin on a cellular telephone. What a wonder of science. The other day, I was there in the uh, Ayala Triangle in Makati, opening the Filipino Heritage Library, which they have sponsored. And there I saw a scholar, uh, really uh, somebody like uh, our winners, uh, working on a computer, accessing by high-tech telecommunications on the Knowledge Highway to the Filipiniana collection of uh, a university abroad. And that connection is now being made throughout the Philippines as the first priority. What a wonderful age we are in, ladies and gentlemen. And so, let us make sure that the peace that we win everywhere, in Mindanao, in our southern regions, here, 
in the most populous region of uh, the Philippines, Metro Manila. There in the Cordilleras, there in summer, where this has already been uh, put in place. Benefit all Filipinos. We are aware that there are still some oppositors, and uh, that is to be expected. This is a free democratic society under which we live. But let us make sure that uh, whatever opposition there is, and that is welcome, that we also eventually work together for the higher goals of our national society, which is people empowerment, <coughs> global competitiveness, and forever a culture of excellence for Filipinos that must be based on the values of unity, solidarity, and teamwork. In other words, UST. Yan, ay pasok ko na yung UST na yan. <laughs> yung Ateneo, my favorite university dahil sa alumnus ako niyan. Pasesya na kayo, no? But again, levity aside, let me uh, tell you where I was earlier this morning. I was the guest speaker at the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Pinaglabanan. And there, I expressed our everlasting gratitude for the priceless gift of freedom that heroes who fought there, and it was considered to be a losing battle by the earlier historians, but not anymore, because the result of that is, because of that battle, because of their sacrifice, that was the very first battle where fire was exchanged against fire, against the imperial forces of mighty Spain that eventually we won our independence. And so we speak of that gift given to them, to us, as one of freedom, because in the end, that is what the revolution finally attained, our freedom and our independence. But at the same time, my dear friends, mga mahal na kapatid at mga kababayan, we must also speak just as much of the gift of their example, which, uh, has a deathless meaning to our people. In their youth, those people who fell at Pinaglabanan, led by Cap uh, Capitan Sancho Valenzuela, in their youth, their lives were touched by a cause greater than themselves. And we learn from them that for people and country, Filipinos should hazard all, sacrifice all if necessary, including life itself. And in this knowledge, we, the living, are thereby invigorated and can be inspired to action. This is the power of the example. And you, the young people, the 30 TOSPs, have that in your hands to do for yourselves, for the Philip the present time, as well as for future Filipinos. It is in this sense that the nation's heroes never really die for they live, they live on in all of us. And they urge us to enrich our great inheritance. In a word, they make believe that we too can strive to be heroes ourselves. Sa madaling sabi, sana ay pagdating natin sa taong 98. Lahat ng mga Pilipino, mga kabataan, mga senior citizens, kagaya ni Jokon, at ako kagaya ng mga hindi pa naisisilang ng mga Pilipino lahat ay sana'y taas noo nakaharap sa buong mundo because by that time with this talent with this rich harvest I'm sure that we shall have not only sustainably turn our economy around we shall have also demonstrated to the world a greater kind of unity, solidarity, and teamwork in facing the challenges of the 21st century. And above all, earn a higher place of dignity and respect in the community of nations. Yan po ang kahalagahan nitong TOSP ng uh, ating inoobserbahan ino ngayon. And so I congratulate our 10 20 and 30 outstanding students of the Philippines and wish you many more successes in your lives and in your careers in the service of our people. Yan ang hamon sa atin lahat mga Pinoy. 
Kaya ba natin ito? Napakahina sagot natin. May yung mga tiga lahar area, sumigaw kayo. Kasi kayo ang lagi na pipirwiso. Kaya ba natin ito? Kaya, kaya. Marami salamat po, mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, we would appreciate it if you could ag again join the 1996 DOSP and finalist for souvenir uh, photographs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. May we request everyone to please remain in your places until the president has left the hall. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please don't forget there is a reception in this hall uh, and you are uh, invited to, uh, to join that reception to honor the TOS.
President of Federation of Filipino Consulting Organizations. The client says, we have Mr. William Keyes, Board of Trustees of the RFM Foundation, who was also an educator, and Father Gabriel Casal of the National Bank of the National Museum, Gloria Maliari of Human Development, and for Humanities, Communication, and Social Sciences, broken into two groups. We have our Chairman Capisana ng mga broadcasters of Filipinas, Ms. Cecilia Tiaglaro, President Pro Barato Incorporated, and Dr. Milagros E. Becha, the Technical Panel on Teacher Education, Dr. Adrian Marcelo, President of the Assistant National Education Testing and Research Center, and Dr. Mita Sutaria, Director of Inotech. For criminology law, business, economics, and industry, we have Dr. Tomas Aquino, Governor, Board of Investments, and also of uh, Asia Pacific. Attorney Roland Induan, Senior Partner of Acra Law Office. Attorney Roman Mabanta, Senior Partner of Romulo Mabanta, Benedicto Paz, Governor of Rotary International. For business, economics, and industry, the uh, accountancy, we have Ed Iguia, also a senior. Uh, Dr. Emmanuel Velasco, Chairman, Civil Retired Commission, and I suppose you know uh, Dr. Velasco, also connected to the domestic facility and agencies. Mr. Eleuterio Coronel of EVP of All Asia Capital and Leasing Corporation. Attorney Abelardo Domondon, Vice Chairman, Board of Accountancy, Professional Regulation Commission. So this. <laughs>
be continuing our or probably improving no? our regional so we will now open the table for questions from our friends in the media please feel free to uh, raise your hand and identify uh, come to the scrutiny uh, based on um, a criteria uh, by the each and every uh, finalist, the 30 finalists, are subjected to a very thorough interview by the Board of Judges. And uh, the Board of Judges actually select the 10. What was said is unsaid, that the youth is the fair of the And uh, we felt that uh, it is very important that we uh, have a program where but with the given we begin to uh, have a role model of the criteria of what is an outstanding student since this will be the future leaders of our country from a field that and many of the schools feel that uh, to compete as one among the ten is rather difficult but if we can select the region's ten outstanding students then they can certify but in fact you recommend the recognition of such kind of contribution of the youth and in terms of how they can be uh, how they can be in fact looked uh, up by the people and believe the people in terms of the decisions and also in terms of responsibility of what they're rather